giving you a voice. Making it loud our own way. Welcome, Welcome to, to the fun. fun. Welcome to FTC Recap, where you get the breakdown and discussion on what's going on in the FTC community. For first updates now, I'm Ishan. Joining me is Brooks and Peter. Let's get right into the headlines for today. Recently, on Reddit, this blog was posted of an FTC alum recounting some of the experiences he's had in FTC regards to cheating. He talks about how many teams have parents doing work even at the topmost levels, and how it doesn't follow the model of kids doing the work feels this is unfair to teams that actually work hard, and it is only going to get worse through the pandemic. In the FTC game manual, there's nothing about the kids doing the work like there has been in previous FLL challenges. But what are your thoughts on this? Yeah, so I think um, while the post does obviously like illustrate the point of uh, mentor building or cheating, um, the post also didn't give any good um, solutions for the problem. And yeah, within uh, FTC, the game manual, there's no definition of what a uh, mentor can and cannot do. So overall, I don't think it was um, a terribly useful post overall. What do you think, Brooks? Yeah, so mentor building is... a is a problem in FTC. Like, um, I always hear of some teams having it happen to them, but it is very, it is very bad. And it, it is an issue in some places, but overall, I think that most of FTC is student built, but it, it would, I think it wouldn't hurt to have a rule that's against it because I do think like mentor building is definitely against the spirit of what FTC is. Yeah, so, so when I think about it, initially I was like, yeah, mentor building shouldn't exist. But the more I think about it, there's no way to, A, make a rule that says kids are going to do all the work. Because in FTC, that's not 100% feasible with things that can be like dangerous or things where like you're using a parent's contact to uh, reach out to some people. Um, but w one of the things that I also am under the impression in is parents are just not going to have as much time as students will right like i could spend 40 hours a week doing ftc back when i was a student and i know parents definitely can't with a full-time job and i i honestly think teams that are mentor building good for them like great the kids are not getting anything out of it and that's on the kids and from most of my experiences a lot of the top teams that i've interacted with and that i'm good friends with are not mentor built and they they honestly are doing the work and the kids know what they're doing. So sure, teams may be mentor building, but that doesn't really affect my experience in first because as long as I'm learning and as I as long as I'm doing great, um, then that's all that matters. And chat is a little divided on this. 55% uh, of chat said that there should not be a rule against. 45% said that there should be a rule against mentor building. I know in FRC this is also a very controversial topic, um, but. Like, I, I don't know what you could do about it. Uh, Brooks, want to go on to the next topic? Yeah, of course. So, since our last show, there have been a few updates to the game manuals for Ultimate Goal, the most major of which has been clarification for power shot score. The revised manual states that power shots may only be knocked down by direct contact, and for each power shot shot down by indirect contact yields a major penalty. This has had negative effects for some teams, which I'll get into later. There have been some minor changes as well, such as allowing for a mentor human player and better wording for some rules and descriptions. Yeah, I, I think a lot of these were just due to um, COVID. Like, I, I thought I saw one about mentor human players. You just talked about that. Yeah. Um, and I think that was just because a lot of events are only allowing five people to show up to an event. And um, when you... Or can't have everybody there, you might need to have a mentor human player because you just physically don't have enough people there. Um, I don't know what the other rules were directly. I don't know how they might affect the gameplay, but I think they were all just minor tweaks. Mm -hmm. Peter? All right, yeah. So uh, a post from the FTC Reddit uh, shows the Andy Mark Waterjet service uh, 
giving an estimate of uh, over three and a half thousand uh, dollars, uh, which converted from a DXX, uh, DXF file. And uh, despite being quite a shock initially, uh, the fault here lies within Onshape, which seems to export DXF files with incorrect units, setting the units to uh, millimeters rather than inches. So, um, what do you guys think of uh, of the Andy Mark water jetting service? Yeah, I, I know with COVID, it's been very hard on a lot of suppliers, especially Andy Mark, since they have in the past provided fields and they provide kits of parts to a lot of teams. I know, Tyler, you've been trying to really talk about some of the stuff they've been doing on the FRC show. Um, but I, I think that the water jetting service is definitely something that FTC teams could use, right? As an FTC team for my first three years, we didn't have access to a CNC. We didn't have access to a laser cutter. We didn't have access to any advanced machining besides 3D printing. Um, and so using a water jetting service would be really cool. And so I highly recommend any team that just wants to start like getting their beak wet with trying to make a drivetrain that's custom. Um, look into look into seeing if you can actually get a cheaper price. And if not, I know Andy Mark's a super reasonable company. Call them up. See if you can get a actual quote. Um, and from the Reddit post, it was confirmed that it was an on-shape glitch. So definitely, definitely look out for that. Uh, Brooks, do you have anything to say? No, I think you said it well. Like, um, in my years when I was building FTC robots, I didn't really know, like, where to get custom parts from. And so it's fantastic to have an easy source to go to for custom parts. And, of course, like you said, get Teams' feet wet in that. So overall, I think it's a really cool service. Cool. So this one's another controversial one. During a First Chesapeake Town Hall that happened yesterday on Twitch, Lead volunteers from First Chesapeake announced that there would not be merit-based advancement to Worlds this year, and it would be a celebration. Uh, the slide that was used is being shown right now. They said that this will be for all regions and not just First Chesapeake. This is interesting because as of right now, First H2 has not canceled Worlds or made any announcements about advancements to Worlds. Uh, we'll have to see how this evolves and look for more details from First HQ as the season progresses. Um, I was quite shocked by this. Like, I had no idea this was coming, especially since a lot of states are trying to do, um, trying to do, like, state championships, and they could have advancement from there, but we don't know what's happening to Worlds. I don't know what you guys think. And I know, Tyler, you were also quite shocked by this. Uh, yeah, at least in my state, uh, they're still planning to have uh, in-person competitions. Um, so, or at least trying to. Um, so, yeah, this was definitely a shock to see, uh, especially with uh, their planning of regionals and also potentially a, like, further uh, statewide competition, potentially, that has been, like, pitched around for Texas. Um, so... To see that worlds would be potentially canceled, yeah, was a bit of a bit of a surprise. Yeah, worlds being canceled would definitely be devastating. But I mean, at least on my end, I'm not entirely sure what to think of this yet. Like, um, what different criteria there would be. Um, I know for Australia, apparently some teams already um, supposedly advance, so it will probably be different for different areas. I think. But All right. I just don't know what to think. Yet. <laughs> All right. I will, I will jump in because uh, I definitely do have some feelings on this. A uh, couple things uh, to point out. One uh, on here, I, I know uh, the Real Simpleton posted in chat that they reached out the first and first uh, said they didn't know anything. Uh, first saying they don't know anything just means that they haven't made it public yet. So keep that in mind. <laughs> uh, something to, to really mention, though, that's interesting, and I'm not trying to dunk on First Chesapeake too hard, but. Uh, why is what is it with first Chesapeake coming out with stuff first, like for the stuff like this happened in FRC and honestly out of all the regions, uh, Chesapeake would be like the lowest. Am I wrong to think about coming out with like you think like a larger area or something like that, right? So, uh, something that confuses me is they don't say if this is something that's going to be permanent or just for this season, and that would be something that I question a bit. If it's something they're looking to do permanent. Uh, wow. Uh, I mean, that, that seems to be a very rash decision by first to go that route. I'm sorry. The whole kumbaya lets everybody feel good about each other sort of thing. You know, that BS only goes so far. It's good for some things, but you know, worlds, 
I agree, should be something where more celebrations happening. I get that, but isn't that the reason we have two champs in the first place? So let's let more teams in then if that's your solution and still let teams who have the best robots in the world actually be at the world championship. It is absolutely absurd to think that that's not going to be uh, what it is. And if that's true, that's a huge fundamental shift in first culture. Uh, you know, it, I know, I guess it's called first tech challenge and not, you know, like how first for box competition is, but I would infer a first tech challenge is still a competition and should be treated as such. Yeah. We should rename them first to break news. Chess team. <laughs> uh, we're gonna have to name it like first tech you know random makes it to worlds or something random like advancement <laughs> yeah first tech yeah first tech random advancement there we go okay great brooks you want to head on to the next topic yes so there has been a growing concern on the validity of the current remote world record by curiosity robotics with no penalties counted the score is 321 but there were violations of rules meant to punish illegal power shot scoring these rules were broken in Autonomous, where one power shot is knocked down with indirect contact, and in Endgame, where another does the same, for a grand total of two major penalties or a 60-point deduction, for a final score of 261. Personally, I think these rules are bad for the game, as indirect contact is not something easily controllable, and it's up to randomness most of the time. Now, they have posted some stuff, like you can put uh, weight behind the wobble goals to stop them from not being knocked down as easily, but... I just feel it'd be so much easier just to have the human player put back the ones that were not directly contacted. Um, but this is what the GDC has ruled, and it seems like this was a violation. What do you guys think? Yeah, I, I thought that was that was completely bullshit, right? Mm. Or BS. Uh, we're on a TV <laughs> show, talk show. Sorry. Um, like, they designed this power shot thing, so it's super unstable. And I haven't seen this in person, but I've seen it on on videos. And it can wobble back and forth. And a ring with very little velocity could easily knock over all three just by hitting the frame. So, like, come on. At least build it better. Um, so, yeah, yeah I don't the know, thing Peter. With the, the DIY field, too, like the, the cardboard one, is the way that it's ruled is, like, you just touch it and it counts. So if you're doing a remote event, it's almost like... Um, uh, a DIY field is like the meta just because of this ridiculous like indirect contact thing. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I think first needs to either add an amendment showing how to strengthen that wall wiggle or that power shot stand or um, reconsider their ruling. Um, all right. Want to move on to the next one, Peter? Yes. So uh, Cyberpunk 2077, uh, the new game by CD Projekt Red. Uh, shipped great to PC and current-gen consoles. However, on previous-gen consoles, the uh, graphics are suspect, to say the least. And uh, CG pro CD Projekt Red rather uh, put out a statement apologizing for not showing the games on previous-gen consoles and are putting out two patches to fix the problem. Uh, they're also perfectly willing to refund gamers on their purchases uh, if indeed they were unsatisfied with their cyberpunk experience. So, uh, Sean, do you have... Yeah, if you haven't seen Cyberpunk and like videos of it, it looks insane. Um, I really want to get the game, and I know most people who are in the FTC community are going to be video games nerds, which is why I included this topic on, um, <laughs> on this channel. Um, but yeah, definitely like if you haven't taken a look, take a look at the game because it's super cool. Um, though I am kind of disappointed that a lot of people like me who have old generation consoles can't actually play the game without it lagging a ton. So just a PSA. Uh, we'll move on to the next topic, which is about the Chris McCullough commemorative coin. Uh, in 2019, the Chris McCullough commemorative coin act passed through Congress and was signed by the president. Uh, it created a commemorative coin for the teacher astronaut, Chris McCullough, where uh, all proceeds from the coin go towards first. The design of the coin will be released on Friday on the First Inspired Twitch channel. There's This is something that has been kind of important to me because I spent a lot of time advocating to members of Congress for the coin, and it was definitely a big push uh, during the 2019 season. But there has been some controversy surrounding where the money will go to and Dean Kamen making an entire speech out worlds about it instead of trying to inspire students. Uh, what do you guys think about this? Have you guys... Are you guys familiar with the coin and stuff like that? Yeah, so I, I too, spent uh, some time advocating to uh, members of Congress about the coin. Um, 
I spoke to Ted Cruz about it, um, and I met with a representative of uh, my other Texas senator, John Cornyn, about it. Um, and I am very happy that it's finally sort of come uh, come to fruition. Um, and first, we'll be getting like a a ten dollar surcharge, which I think is I don't know if it's like, like the first time they've done that, but I think it's a a good thing. And I'm glad that first we'll have some more money, um, especially in a, after the lack of worlds last season. So hopefully they're uh, getting some of that back. <laughs> yeah, so um, I haven't heard much about the controversy of spending. I'm not sure what that's about, but I think it is cool that first got this coin passed. Um, and definitely tops the teams who reached out to their representatives. <laughs> yeah, I, the controversy on the spending was the initial bill to create this coin was initially having all the funds go towards first teams. So it was going to be distributed to teams somehow or used to create teams. Now it's going straight to first HQ. Um, I guess I understand coming from first HQ, but I, it would have been nice to see it go towards teams. But that's going to wrap up all of our headlines for today. Uh, if you see any headlines, make sure to drop them in our FTC disc or in the fun Discord, and we'd love to cover them for the next show. Thanks for watching. If you want more fun content, be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos. <laughs> <laughs>